Mr. Wicker's Window by Carly Dawson. Chapter 2. Mike was in his class at public school, the 8th grade. Mike was all right. Chris liked him. Hi, Ma Chris. Hi, Mike. What you doing? Nothing much. Just looking. Say, you know something? Mike wiggled his, himself across part of the Pep Boy's window to gain Chris's attention. Old Wicker's got to sign his window. He needs a boy. For after school, I guess. Think he'd pay, huh? Why don't you try? Chris looked from a nickel-plated flashlight to a car jack and spark plug. Oh, I don't know. Mike persisted. Well, I'll tell you what. Know who needs a job bad? That's Jakey Harris. His mother's sick and he's got that bad foot. Why'd you ask for him, huh? You sit next to him in school. All Chris heard was, Needs a job bad. Mother's sick. Okay, he said. Only, why didn't you ask him him yourself? Mike became uneasy and fished an elastic band out of his pocket. He made a flick of paper and sent it soaring out into M Street. Well, he admits, I did. Wicker's such a queer old guy. That old antique shop is dark and spooky and... Well, I went in and there wasn't nobody there, only him and me. Mike stopped and after a pause, Chris said, So what? So... Mike swallowed. So... I said it was there about the job, and you know what he said? He said, he went on without urging, but with a frown of perplexity reaching his forehead. He said, turn around and look out that window, son, and tell me what you see. Mike stopped and looked at Chris with a comical expression. Everybody knows what's going on in his window, he burst out, of all the silly things. But I turned around and looked, like he said, told me to, and of course there was a traffic going by. And trucks and cabs and people crossing the street and the freeway overhead and you know. So what did he say? I asked, and for the first time that day, the heavy weight he carried within him lifted a little and lightened a little. Mike examined the toe of his worn boot shoe. Oh, he just smiled, that funny little crackly smile, and said, I'm sorry, young man. You won't do. For a moment, both boys stared into one another's eyes, each questioning and wondering, and neither being able to supply the answer. At last, Quir spoke the sense. Queerest thing I ever heard. Gee, what do you suppose? Mike took heart, experience believed, and his bafflement shared. He spoke cheerfully. It doesn't make sense. The wicker's so old, he may be idle. Don't you reckon? Who else would keep an antique store where nobody ever even looks? All the other antiques places are along Wisconsin Avenue where people go to shop. You reckon Jakey could really use the job? Chris asked, his courage ebbing as he pictured him to himself the dark little shop with his bow window of small panes and whisker wicker. So thin and wizened he seemed only bones and wrinkles. Think he really needs it? He pursued. But Mike was certain. Or perhaps he needed a companion in this curious experiment. You bet he does. He told me at noon today he wished he could find someone that could help bring some money in. His mother's sick, he repeated. And Jackie don't look so good himself. Well, Chris said, half agreeing. I'll go with you, Mike announced, as if that finished the argument. Which, as a matter of fact, it did. Chris did not feel too happy about his mission and hung back a long, moment longer, looking in the pep boy's windows at things he had already seen. He would have liked to get the job for Jakey, who needed it, but somehow the task of facing Mr. Wicker, especially now that the light was going and dusk edged into the streets, was not what Chris had intended for ending the afternoon. Although he had not been quite certain what he, how he had meant to spend the rest of the remaining daylight, Mike's plan did not seem to fit his present mood. Are you coming? Mark challenged with a hint of derision. Yes, said Chris suddenly. I'm coming. I'll ask for Jakey. Mike's expression changed at once to one of triumph, but Chris was only partly encouraged. The two boys walked to the corner of M Street and Wisconsin Avenue. Traffic roared up the first short block of Wisconsin from under the high steel freeway down to their left. Chris glanced down the slope of Wisconsin. Houses and shops thinned suddenly on both sides of the street. Far down at the very end, on his side, he could see the brick walls and slate roof of Mr. Wicker's house. Chris knew it well. For times without number, he had pressed his nose to the square Georgian panes of Mr. Wicker's window to gaze at the strangely fascinating jumble of oddments that were displayed. 
Now, however, he felt in no mood to visit the curiosity shop and stood shifting his feet and looking aimlessly about. Mike, beside him, was becoming restive and gave him the joke poke. Bet you aren't going after all! End of part one of chapter two of Mr. Wicker's Window.